Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. And we are your hosts today. <laughs> we are coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut, where we live with our dog, Tarquin. Today is Sunday, March 20th, and this is episode 57. Wow. And the year is 2022. It is. And this is episode 57. So thank you wow. all for joining us. Um, welcome back to any returning viewers and welcome to any new viewers. Um, thanks for joining us. If yeah, you haven't been... already, subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. Stuff. Great. So, we're a little late, but um, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And our for those of you, mugs. yes, these are fantastic. We actually are, we use these year round. We do. Yeah. And now that I am Irish, 19%, <laughs> um, I feel validated that I can use these all year round. Yeah. So, um, let's see. So, we're coming to a day later than normal right um and we'll get and into i'm that. i'm happy that we're able to actually do this i was like concerned that we wouldn't be able to podcast at all oh for um, sure i didn't i didn't expect us to podcast yeah um this we've been week. a little bit quiet on social media and stuff and i apologize for that but we've been really focused on tarquin and it's been really kind of stressful and around kind this of, place i'm gonna say a mental health like yeah it's there's so much noise outside of the home oh well, yeah right Good point. So there's so much noise outside of the home that when you come home, at least for me, it's like a sanctuary. You come home and it's like your safe space. And with Tarquin being injured, it just hasn't felt like that. Right. Um, so that ability to decompress and um, just get your mind right when you're mm -hmm. like when I'm home for me, it just hasn't happened. Yeah. And same lot. for me. It's like I use, you know, knitting and all that stuff. Like, because I have a stressful job, obviously. We all well, have stressful jobs, but coming home from the hospital it's just like you know i want to decompress like you said and then go from yeah. like one you know one extreme to another he's okay tark one is is yeah. okay so let, let's let's kind of here we'll bring it anyway back. sorry so this is a knitting podcast this is well not podcast well no, whatever it is we it's do. a knitting youtube channel yeah we're talking about knitting crochet yarn sure. dyeing and all that fun stuff um, and it's a poop show and we do we talk yeah. about whatever we're not prepared by any means no, i'm actually less have. prepared than normal same. I'm just happy um, to sit down and, and, and hang out with y'all. Yeah. Actually, this is probably going I was thinking to be... about doing this as a live. Oh, well. I know, but we're not, Thanks obviously. for having that conversation You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't chatted. I was going to say, this is probably going to be one of the longest periods of time that you and I have spent together in the same room. I know. And a good week or, I know. Week or longer. Maybe yeah. a week and a half. Yeah. Um, so today I have three FOs. Wow. And two eps. Wonderful. I have two FOs and one work in progress that I'm going to be showing. All right, cool. So I have two other works in progress, but I'm not showing them today because I didn't. I haven't worked on them in the past two weeks. All right, so why don't we just start off with life stuff because it's going to be kind of quickish. Okay. Not much has gone on. No. So two weeks work, and then we're going to call this segment life slash Tarquin time. So we've been keeping you guys... I know, I feel like Tarquin time has been going. Yeah. We've been keeping you guys updated on Tarquin. I think we're almost yeah. at about eight weeks of just constant stuff Something. with him. So if you remember, if you've watched before, a couple weeks... Not a couple. A couple months ago, he hurt his neck or back. So that was an ongoing thing. X-rays, neuro um, console. Mm -hmm. We talked and, about that, I think, the last time. Yeah, they were and very then... Nice. In somewhere in between the, that time frame, he also hurt his leg, mm. and the neuro consult said, "Oh, it's not neuro neurological." So then we took him to the vet. The vet did X-rays. This was not last week. The week before, the week after the last podcast, right. did X-rays and said it's a torn CCL. Maybe, Maybe they're not sure. Right. There's like a who knows? They yeah. don't know. There's some swelling around his knee. A CCL in a dog is very similar to uh, ACL injury for like athletes and stuff. They just don't they don't have that anterior ligament. It's more of like a, um, it, it's just off. It's just called something different for dogs. But it's a very similar like injury. But we're not a hundred percent sure. The X rays were kind of inconclusive. Because um, he's his, a, he's a, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> what? Nothing. He's. He's just has too much energy for totally. them to get good x-rays. Yes. He's um, a bundle of energy, which is great. And he's almost correct. 12 years old. And, yeah. you know, so of course us, every little thing we're like, oh my God, oh no, oh my gosh, you know, well, he's old. Is that, what What do we do? Blah, 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 blah. You all know Tarquin yeah. is, is our little baby. 
Um, so there's swelling in the knee, possible yeah. torn CCL. The knee is maybe in the middle or something like that is what they said. May need surgery, may not. Rest them. And he, here's some medication. So we didn't get how to rest them or how long to rest them. How long to give the medication. So we're doing everything that we can. We've been trying stairs and a ramp unsuccessfully because the leg, he doesn't have Steps the power. Steps up to the couch, not like. Right. He doesn't have the power to, to really I know. do them right now. Um, so everything was going okay. And then last Friday, he re-injured it by, I didn't get to him in time. Um, he tried jumping Jumping on the, on the couch. couch. I wasn't prepared because he was eating. Yeah. So I didn't expect it to happen. I, but I left. You had left to hang out with your brothers. Which was wonderful. Correct. For you. That was really nice. <laughs> I drank some, <laughs> Not some for me and big Darkwood. beers. We have, um, I mean, we went to like 99. It's a chain restaurant. It's yeah. nothing like fancy or anything like that. But they carry, we have a local brewery here in Stratford called Two Roads um, Brewery. And they have, they, a lot of their beer is in, you know, restaurants and bars locally. And so I'm not sure if they're national if they like ship out anywhere else. But anyway, um, it's basketball season and UConn is like our team. So we uh, we watch UConn and they have a new beer called Shoot. Man. Not shoot. No, it's not called Shoot. It's something about UConn. UConn. Son of a gun. Anyway, it was a local beer brewed um, by them, but paying like homage to um yukon they, they do a lot of like things like that like they have yeah, the honey spot road which is where they right. were located or were located on for a while mm. um yeah so you did that dinner that friday night yeah and it was Tarquin it was great went to jump i didn't get right. to him in time because i was expecting him to eat his dinner while i was eating mine because that's how we roll um and whatever he did he just couldn't put pressure on the back mm-hmm. leg and it was really bad up until I would say like yesterday. Yesterday is the first day I really saw improvement. Me too. Where he's felt improvement, where he's attempting to jump on things again, and he's putting more pressure on it. He's not limping around as much. Um, So with all that being said, he's going to see an ortho surgeon tomorrow just so that we could have peace of mind and know what we're doing. We need a plan. um, I don't think we're going to be going the surgical route because he is improving. Right. And... um... But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We'll keep you guys up to date. And thank you all for reaching out and asking and sharing your stories too about your your little ones. Because, yeah, it's just I will say it was, I, it's frustrating. Last week and I just shut down. Like I, I, I didn't have any mental or emotional ability to do much. I came upstairs and I laid in bed under the covers and watched TikTok for a couple hours. I don't even think I was able to read. So um, it was nice this weekend. Yeah, both of us being home because I stayed home all week from work. I worked mm-hmm. from home all week. Um, just to be there because yeah. he's not like crate trained or anything. Crate-trained. So it's very difficult for us. We're, we're, you're doing a good job training him now, like getting him used to being in the crate and then it's okay and all that stuff. But shame on us for like not doing that yeah, as a puppy. I wish we, I wish we stuck with it. Um, yeah. because his routine is when we leave for work and we're both out of the house, um, we put a baby gate up at the bottom of the stairs and he has full run of our downstairs, yeah. but he jumps up into the window, the front window, and he hangs out there. We have a nest cam where we can check on him to make sure he's okay. But he literally doesn't leave that window. He may jump down and do a quick walk around the downstairs and then back up in the window. And he's mm-hmm. there until we get home. Um, so we know we can't do that. And I tried to put him in the crate untrained going to work on Monday. And that was not good. Like yeah. I was out on the front porch. Drama ensued. 30 seconds. He was scratching at right. the crate to get out. So, right. um, anyway, anyway, so that's, that's our segment. Tarquin time. I like that. that. We're going to introduce, we'll keep, uh, we'll, we'll have that segment. And if you're not interested, you can fast forward, but it's yeah. our lives and our podcast. So we'll talk about whatever we want to. <laughs> okay. So thank you. But literally that's been our two weeks. That is. So that's it. Yeah. So but now, I did, I did go and hang out with both of my brothers, which was really nice. Yeah. And we haven't done that in a while. No, um, you guys haven't. Yeah. And it, it was good. We got appetizers and i got a delicious burger and fries which i can go for today Uh oh oh boy tarquin's on the move so maybe he'll go in his bed let's pretend that it's not happening okay he's gonna he's, he's creeping well do you want to go put him yeah please yes so i guess we're not done with tarquin time so we're also not um we're not allowing him to jump on anything um 
so our living room, every, we have some baby gates up and we have two couches. So the baby gates are blocking that. Um, he's not doing stairs at all. So it's just been um, a constant. There was a yoga mat up for a while. Oh, please. It, our living it, room looked like a freaking disaster. We should. Ex- I have a picture. Show you do? Yeah. No, that's embarrassing. No, These are I'm, the things that we have to do. Yeah, let's see. I we're 10 minutes in. We're just all been talking about Tarquin. So there is knitting, I promise. Yeah. So here's kind of how our living room oh, geez. had been blocked off. Oh, yeah. Baby gates. Baby gates, carts, a crate. You can't see the <laughs> we dining room. We used everything that we can. Yeah. This basket of blankets. Yep. You can't see the dining room chairs. Um, but oh, yeah, yeah, it's been. So, yeah, that's kind of how we've been living for yeah. the last week. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So let's talk about some admin stuff. I'll start with coupon codes. Coupon codes. All right. So we have coupon codes for you all. First up is Naughty Knitting Sex, which you'll see one a little bit later. The code yes, is... Yes, I have one. Do I have one? one as well? Yeah. Nice. The code's Prickle Pants 15 for 15% Show off your order. Is. Then we have Trilogy Yarns, which is NATR 15 for 15% percent percent? off, um, excluding her clubs. Knit Swag. Oh, yeah. Boop. Ching. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, that is Kevin and Ray for 15% off your order. Yep. We have Lila Styles, which is NATR 10 for 10% off your order. Always Queenie Believe. The code is 9 inch circ for 20% off. And then Kitty Did Bags, Kevin and Ray 10 for 10% off your order. And all those codes can be found down below if you hit the little chevron. That's a little upside down arrow pointing downwards. It's not an arrow. Oh, no, it's not. An arrow I know. A... You're right. It's it's like a this. It's a chevron. Click, click on the chevron. Maybe people don't know what the word chevron means. All right. And then we have our spring cleaning mal. We do, which we ju- We forgot. dropped the ball mm-hmm. and forgot to mention or put the um, hashtag. hashtag below. So we are using a similar one to last year. Yes. So it's is... hashtag NATR spring mal 2022. Um, and so you can, you know, enter via Instagram and share your, your finished objects or even works in progress. We'll just, you know, keep it active. And then we have an FO thread and a chatter thread. We, um, have a few entries, which is wonderful. Maybe we can look at one. Let's look at one. So the idea of this (gasps) one is is beautiful to just kind of get our whips done throughout the springtime. Um, finish some objects that have just been lingering and yeah. look at yeah. all you people oh, oh that's, that's pretty isn't that gorgeous is that crochet or knit that looks like it's knit but crochet is definitely oh yeah um, it does okay i see how this is. is pressed flowers it's and this is a mouse so it's anything it's paper crafts, yeah yeah do knitting yeah I, do you and i know we say paper crafts do you think people pa- pa- i guess people who do paper crafts if they're, they're also knitters they quick. would oh, go you um, know what this is the blanket i actually was thinking about doing for a potential yeah i we made this i made this before um for dominic right i think it was for dominic it was the rainbow ripple baby blanket this is crocheted i thought it was um really really pretty that's crocheted yeah. are you sure yeah because I, I i i did one see those oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Crochet. I see. yeah it's gorgeous um and it knits up or crochets up pretty quick so they're doing a um wow you guys are awesome Anyway, check out if you don't follow us, if uh, Ravelry is accessible to you. Um, check out some of the finished objects that people have posted. And the chatter, we'll pull something from the chatter as well. You can just chat about your project, show works in progress, you know, all of that yes. stuff. We'll, whips are definitely welcome. Um, we just encourage... Well, no, that's the whole point of it. <laughs> right? The spring mouse, oh, the finish your whips. Whip. It needs yeah, to be a whip. It needs to be a whip. Only that, whips are welcome. That started um, a yes. whip on the needles before March 1st, and Thank this you. goes until the end of May. May 31st, 2022. Yes. Only whips allowed. No new projects. That's it. Really, just finish something you started. Have fun. And then keeping in um, line with make-alongs. So both of the winners for our previous one have reached out to us. So prizes Mm -hmm. will be going out this week. Um, We just haven't had the time to get to the post office and get these packaged and shipped out. So we'll send those out. And now we're going to... um, So... We're going to start a new one. And... The reason we're starting a new one yeah. is because if only if you're only interested in like knitting, just like you can fast forward until we start showing like holding things up. Yeah. yeah. So well, no, we're gonna start just holding holding up knits. Yeah. Because we have other things to hold right. up, and y'all, 
We usually talk about acquisitions at the end of the podcast. Well, owl posts. We owl normally posts. talk about owl posts at the end. But we got a really amazing package in the mail this week. And it's because of you guys, it actually. Um, so we... Do y'all remember these. us talking about our... Our, our Delic um Makers. No. Makers? Is it Makers Case? Yes. Right? Needle Case? So our friend Jeff had turned us on to these a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so you guys know, look, it fits my notebook. I know. I, I took a page out of your book and I put mine in here as well. I took a page out of yours and I put some stickers on mine. You did. Not yeah, many, they're though. very cute. Um, so this is the, the Delic Maker's Needle Case, right? So it's... Portfolio. 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 Delic Portfolio. Thank you. All right. Part so, of their Lotus collection. Has a zipper on the outside. This is a wax canvas and faux leather yes and on this side of it you have your needles so yes. i have my chagu set this is the full set have my needle thingamajiggers and then i started putting cords mm-hmm. in here mine is laid out very very similarly have some extra tips yeah. also have some tips some crochet hooks larger darning needles in the back yeah. i have another needle set back here these are the the chagu um five inch tips for like shawls and stuff so they fit nicely back here too i have got um some um you know what are these things called those are um, for cable. cables cable needles um i have a crochet hook in here too and like kevin anyway long story yeah. short you, you know and it's fun because people have been sharing what they got on like instagram and tagging us yeah and, and um one person actually and i have to respond back one person was like incorporating their current needle set into here somehow. They were doing some like surgery and stuff and attaching them. Oh, um, yeah, it's really been cool to see how you all use this. But this is definitely by far yeah. one of our most prized yeah. possessions now at this point. Yeah, and, and the reason I love it is we have been looking for a good needle case, right. and I've seen a lot that are really expensive. This one is not. No, uh, it's not inexpensive. It, it's I but it's quality. 70, it's seventy five dollars, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, but I've seen some, you know, o- around the two hundred dollar mark, which just was outside of our budget, mm-hmm. um, and not something I was willing to spend. Yeah. On and this is just so well made. Totally. So so look. With all that being said, watch. We we were contacted by Delic. What? What is this? Thanked us. What is this? Really, thank you guys. So thank you guys, because I don't know, you guys tagged us. Um, they sent us some portfolios to give to you. What? So we have two of the Aren't olive. Aren't you glad you didn't fast forward? Right. So we have two of the olive portfolios, and we have two of the navy blue, or navy gray, blue gray portfolios. For I you can't guys. even. Um, but. But if that wasn't amazing enough. Actually, I'm going to start here. So then they also were kind enough to send us a gift yeah and the reason i'm showing this is because uh, yeah because it leads right, right into so we have more things for you guys too if you guys they sent us the delic makers turn backpack it, it that is so where's mine this one matches is this so is the cool. olive green one again it's wax canvas shut up the faux leather is it faux so, or is it real i i don't i, I have no it idea. feels supple like it might Feels be real. Supple. It's so, so supple. So um this one has some stitch markers on the side. It has where you can add more yeah, stitch markers. Has a zipper pouch in the back. Yeah, which is clever. Guys, I might use this for my work bag. Um I might and just, then inside I don't know. it has a yarn cutter, so you can cut your yarn. Mm-hmm. A zipper here has another pocket here. A several, S- several here. Then another pouch with some. You can put some like pens or needles or whatever yep. in there. A D ring. Yeah, is that what um, it's called? A D ring. Yeah. Oh, wow. A grommet. Yeah, and this will flip up. Like. What? I know. So it's it's real leather. It smells like real leather. It's real leather. I yeah, I don't know what I'm speaking of. It's legit. Yeah, you don't know. Don't let don't let Kevin tell you. No, no, I could be lying. 
And then there's also a dot mm, journal. It smells so good. In here. Um, oh, here's the. Oh, a darning needle. And then a dot journal, just a little notebook. And then they included their. Um, Those really sweet. Though. Maker's bags, which are canvas. So it's a large and a small. The quality is amazing. Yeah. So again, wax canvas. We have. And you know what's um, cool about the wax canvas is it starts to get a little bit of like. Patina, patina and wear, and so, I love that. They sent us a, two sets, or four for you guys. Two of the olive and two of the blue. So what? we're gonna use these for giveaways. And to start that off, we're gonna start a new make along today. It is going to be a shawl make along. So knit or crocheted shawls. Um, start today and we'll run it through the end of April. Yes. And you can do anything. anything. So we're going to have a chatter thread, an FO thread. and You know what? Will... Most of our knit alongs are just do anything. Pretty much. And then we'll do a hashtag that's hashtag NATR shawl shawl it off. Shawl it off. Yep. Like Taylor Swift, shake it off. We're going to do a shawl it off. Okay. So it's going to be the shawl it off now. Okay. All right. So you can do a one skein wonder, um, which I think, who's doing a one um, skein? Yarn Hellions. Yarn Hellions. Is doing yes. one skein and yes. the Hitchhiker. I'm going to cast it on today. I'm going to grab are? a skein and I'm going to cast it on. I can't cast anything else on. Yes, we can. I am done being monogamous. Um, yeah. All right. As long Over. as you're monogamous in your marriage, then we're good. I'm just kidding. Okay. No, I'm not kidding. But you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> um, what's next? So right. that was the most amazing thing. And I know we usually yes. wait to the end to show all that, but it was just so amazing that the people that like, we've been talking to from Delacue has been, she's been amazing. Um, we didn't know what was no, coming. Had and no, had no idea. This was like blew my mind. No and idea. It really is. It's you guys for um, tagging us and, yeah. and, you know, taking our advice and, yep. um, and if it's not in your price range, you know, a skein of yarn, do a shawl, and, and you get entered. We have, yeah. a, like, eight, one, eight like prizes. 16 things to give away. Yeah, we have a ton. So, yeah. thank you all. Now let's talk about some knitting. Woo. Okay, 22 minutes in. We're ready It's good, to... because I don't feel like I have much uh, knitting content. All right. So, let why don't you talk, start, because you have, you have an FO on. You want to talk about what I'm wearing? Yeah, let's talk about what you're wearing. Guys, I'm finished. Finally finished. I, I, um, what am I trying to say? I have no idea. I did not. Okay. Yes, I know what you're yeah. trying to say. So let's just start with what I'm wearing. I have been working on this for quite a while, and this is um, the Easy Folded Poncho by Church Mouse Classics. Has it really been a while, though? I feel like it's well, fairly new. You, yes. It's cast on Let this me... year. Right? It is cast on this year. Yeah, course. so that's yes. not too bad. Okay. Well, let's... Um, wow, now I do... I'm using like the front part of this. And I'm right? Just, it's like, so, so smart. I know. You're I'm so... so happy I thought about that. Me too. Time. I just have to add more things in here. All right. So, this I started... Oh, they come with little stickers. Did you know that? I did. I oh. thought you knew that too. No, I didn't. Yeah. That's clever. Arteza. These are the notebooks that we use. I think that's the brand. I'd say that we would link it below, but I probably will forget. Um, all right, so I cast this on. You're way better at noting your projects than I am. Thanks. January 11th. So it's been February, okay, so two March, months. two months. That's not awful. I think so. But it's okay. And I finished it on the 18th. So I just finished this Saturday night. I think it was Saturday night. It was like the first time that we got to, or Friday night or something, where Tarkin was feeling Friday better. Night. It was Friday night. Like we got to hang out together. And no. we were, knitting i don't know that we did we did i came upstairs you, yeah but then you came back down because yes at seven he stayed down with me yeah 7 30 i remember now 7 38 yeah or 7 38 o'clock no 7 38 wow on the dot well i'm gonna sneeze i think okay well should we wait make a spectacle of it <coughs> nostrovia <coughs> bless you <coughs> thank you um so i originally was going to do the version with the cowl neck you can see in this picture here, there's a um, a cowl. And then this one is with Sans cowl. And I finished, I finished it. 
and I picked up the stitches to do the cowl and I just wasn't feeling it. I just felt like it might've been too tight. Um, I tried it on. It's not for me. This is for a friend. And I think it looks, I think it looks really good without the cowl. Yeah. I am sure I will show you, but I used city tweed DK in the Orca colorway. How many balls did you order? We're not going to have that conversation. I ordered 10 balls. And before we started, I was counting. I was like, I've got to get this right. So I used six and a half balls of yarn okay. to complete the knit. Um, and this is, I believe, oh, 55% merino, 25% super fine alpaca, and 20% Donegal tweed. I used the recommended needles, which is a US 6, four millimeter needle. It did take a lot of time because it was it really was just a yeah. giant rectangle. And it, it probably would have gone a lot quicker, but you get I get bored. I got bored with it a little bit, um, oh, okay. especially towards the end. So I did a provisional cast on uh, with the crochet hook. Five and a half millimeter crochet hook is what I used to do my provisional cast on. I, I thought it was bigger um, to make it a little bit easier to kind of like unzip it, which that didn't work for me because I'm not very good at unzipping, apparently. I find that the most difficult thing. Me too. I cannot figure out I think how I'm doing to. It wrong. I must do it wrong too. The, there's so a, I just pick it out. There's an end that I tried pulling from both ends. I know, and it never works for me. No. But there's supposed to be an end that yeah. you, like people typically tie a knot on, so they know this is the one that you pull, and it's just supposed to come out super nice and right. easy, and it never does. Right, never ever does. Um, I did check my Ravelry, so I will have all of these notes listed in Ravelry because I've been staying up to date on my Ravelry pages. But for some reason, this one wasn't in Ravelry, even though I thought I did put it on Ravelry. So Maybe I will put all it. of these notes there. Um, so I got, uh, my gauge was 20 stitches per four inches, which is about five stitches per inch. My row gauge was 28 rows per four inches, which is roughly about seven rows per inch. Um, and then I will stand up and show you what I have. Uh, so this is the, uh, you probably, you can't see the whole thing. I'll post a picture also on Instagram, Kevin. Um, but, oh, here we go. So it's nice. It's simple. It's an yeah. uh, easy Simple, um, <laughs> what I was thinking about the other night when <laughs> with you. Oh, so I will definitely talk about this. Yeah. I'll take it off and I'll show you. So that's it. You just, you knit this giant long rectangle and then you, uh, here, I'll show you. So I made a mistake because I didn't read the pattern and luckily Kevin was there. Luckily we were in the same room. Yeah. So. You basically, you're knitting this giant long rectangle, which you guys have all seen. It's 50 inches, it's right? It's 50 inches long. It is a paid for pattern, so I don't want to give too, too much away. But you are supposed to just fold it in half and seam a little bit to create this shoulder here. And this is your neck here. If you wanted to do the cowl, this is where you would pick up and do the cowl. So my dumbass, I seamed, and I I, I mattress stitched. Um, I originally seamed this whole thing closed. This I seamed all of this because I was reading the pattern. Then I turned it, and I seamed all of this. And so when I went to put it on, it was like. And he was like, oh, this is the like, shoulder. This it must goes be so the shoulder. And it was like sticking out so far. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Kevin's like, can I see the pattern? So he did. And he was like, no, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, no, I swear I'm not. I'm following the pattern. No, you said I'm following the schematics. The schematics. So there's a schematic in the pattern. I wasn't following the schematic. And I read the pattern. Yeah. I was like, um, you're doing it wrong. Right. So um, anyway, I'm I'm very happy with it. I think she would like it. She'll yeah, like it yeah. a lot. It the fabric that it made, it this is beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. Um I will I will for sure consider using this for like a sweater. Right. Yeah. Um We've gotten a lot of feedback on that and people have yeah. used this for sweaters and said it makes gorgeous. a beautiful sweater. So Gor I love the drape. I think this will also make a nice shawl. Yeah, they, too, just to kind of like wrap it around a cowl. Anything next to the skin, this is so next to the skin soft. And it's a you want to make underoos, go for it. And, right, and it was affordable. I mean, nitpick yeah, says. I'm not too sure how much it was, but it was definitely affordable. Let's, look. Let's just go. Okay. Look now. 
Um, Nipix is having a sale right now on their Felici again. We, I think we, they're getting ready for the next batch. No, yeah. I know. 30% off uh, all Felici fingering and worsted. The code is Felici20. Yeah. One. Uh, 22 rather um, um all right so you yeah i think that's a really nice i i might make one i don't know for who though yeah i would definitely make one again i just need to i think if i made it for myself i would feel a little bit better about it i, I don't know why i felt like i needed to rush because it was like it's technically a gift so i don't know if um if maybe that contributed to me just kind of like not feeling like i wanted to knit under a uh, like a timeline not that i had one i don't know how to explain it but all right city tweeted Super 690, happy 699 a ball so oh that's so i used for 100 grams you're at 14 dollars for 100 grams so that's not that's not bad. no and i used um six and a half so seven so 49 dollars so, for that yeah i i think yeah, that's not bad at all no and it's 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 gorgeous you've got the alpaca and um merino and I love the tweed. The tweed gives Me it too. just a little more for yeah. because it's such a plain pattern. The tweed gives it a little visual interest, right? So that's really a nice. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. So the one thing that I will, I may, I may, I may do um, is these edges. I don't have blocking wires, and when you're knitting, you're creating like a selvage edge, so you're slipping that that first stitch. Um, okay. Pro wise or knit wise, depending on where you are in the pattern. And so it creates this little selvage edge um, here, yeah. which has been fo like kind of folds in on itself. Interesting. Typically, I thought it kept it straight. It didn't. No, I don't know. Stockinet curls. Stockinet does curl. Yeah. Um, but I'm slipping each one of those, so maybe the, I don't. I'm not sure. So, um, just on that one side, it's curled up. It's curls up a little bit, but I'm not a hundred percent upset with that. Would you? I might just steam it with the iron, you know, the iron and the uh, wet cloth. If you did it again, would you do an I-cord? I would do an I-cord. Right. I would incorporate the I-cord, especially knowing where where you're going to seam. I couldn't visualize it in my head, like how it was going to be constructed. Right. Um, but it is so, such a simple, simple pattern. And I would highly recommend it. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from other people who have done this pattern. Yeah. And um, And they feel the same way. That it does, it takes a while, but it's well worth it. And I, I think, um, I, I think I would absolutely do this again. I think that you can use this concept to create, you know, crochet shawls that are very similar. Poncho. If you know, Poncho. ponchos. Thank you. Beg your pardon. So yeah, I, I'm very, very happy with it. I think I'm gonna make myself a poncho. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. It's very comfortable to I wear. I have some city tweed already. I only have two skeins, so I'll hey, buy look. more. Yeah, but I have some. No, but I have I have, I have some this color. I have this. I have Dale. So I'll see and if how, they have more like, Dale. How easy is it to wear? I mean, you just throw it on. And then I make Happy Justin. And what, knit, Justin want, made a beautiful poncho. I don't remember the name one. of that one. I don't know, though. but I may do that. Yeah. All right. So that's yeah. this is it. This is yeah, the good, easy folded job. poncho. It's nice. Thank you. I'm 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 so happy with it. I it was such a a pain, like I said. Go team, go. Go team, but um, but well, well worth it. And you're right, the tweed. I think the tweed. The is, tweed, is I think, is a, a really great touch on that yeah. because it does. Yeah. It yeah, yeah, it's really nice. And I think for I mean, uh, this is a good size for me too. This is you know, Moogie's a lot smaller. Yeah, she's than shorter me. than you, so it's yeah. gonna be really, really. So nice it'll be really nice if it was for if if I was doing this for myself, I might go. I might make it a little bit bigger. I don't know. Would you go longer or wider? Would you add maybe mm. an inch? Maybe. Actually, I don't know. How does the back look? I'm not even... I think the back is great. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't change it. And So I, that's that. I believe you said, too, this is a one size, right? Yeah, they don't have different okay. sizes. This is, right. this is um, it's one size. It's really, the pattern itself is, um, is one page. I'm going to look up a poncho when we're done. Yeah. This yeah. one, I, I highly recommend. It's super... Okay. And you, you know what? If you don't want, I mean, a stockinette gives it that that drape. That's what makes it, you know, so drapey. I think. But you can even do this in garter. Use the same concept. Just do it in garter. But garter is shorter. Right. So, so you'd you have need to, to knit much. You're going to probably use more yarn. But if you yes. don't want to, um, if you don't want to purl, no. 
You I mean, mean, make it, you know, just make it longer. Well, purling uses more yarn yeah. naturally. So you may end mm. up using less yarn, but you will probably have to, you know, you're probably right though. You would end up using more yarn because the garter fabric is shorter. Two rows of garter is shorter than yeah. two rows like of this, stock Like this, this, you know. But it, you would need to. didn't really grow all that much, to you, be honest with you. Yeah. And you would need it. Well, it's non superwash. Oh, it's non superwash. Yeah, that's right. You would need, um. And you, I wouldn't use like a tweed in it if you were to no, do you, garter because yeah, it would take away from the um, whatever. The but only no, reason I did the tweed is because the tweed's well, nice. Yeah, I think it's perfect. And anyway, Aaron, yeah, Aaron did his is sweater. using the Aaron weight tweed yeah. for a sweater. And if it feels similar to this, he's gonna love it. Yeah, and how quick to knit up an Aaron weight sweater, right? Okay. Anyway, Good job. thank you. Easy folded poncho. All right. Um, my first two FOs are really quick. This is kind of what I used. This week, I knit them both this week to get me yeah, going. Back like, going. Yeah, um, totally. I needed small projects because I was home working with the dog and he was up and down. So you guys have seen it. Bearded Pearl Bag. Hey, what's that? Some yarn from your poncho. Oh, poncho fuzz? Um, Bearded Pearl Bag, which I love. Totally. Caleb and Justin. This is the Pearl Soho colorful half and half washcloth. Thank you guys for telling me how to download the pdf oh I my did not gosh see the print option at the bottom of the i pattern. know um, <sighs> mind blown so thank you for that and if you guys we get this every now and again we use um the good notes app yeah it's i think it's a paid app mm -hmm. maybe seven or eight dollars for it but that's where i've started putting my patterns in yes as you can kind of see yeah that's where i'm showing all my patterns as well so like this is how i have mine organized too you've got hats shawls sweaters do you know it so boggles nice. my mind that you don't use dark mode why? I don't know. I just love dark mode compared to um, okay, light mode. I guess. Maybe that's why so, we get along so well. I'm using you the dark heart. You all know my Pearl Soho Buttercup Cotton in Cloud Gray and Carbon Black. This Cloud Gray I have now used in six washcloths. Yeah, you're, One you're a washcloth knitting knitter. So here they are. These are going... These are gifts. This is going to be for my brother-in-law, who's a Raiders fan. So I went with gray and black. And then I now have the matching. Well, not matching. Hey, this is mine. That has to go in the bathroom. And then this is for my sister. Oh, yeah, and a lot of people were asking, can you use this for your for your body and for your face? Absolutely. Yes. That's what I That's use what we for. use them for. We actually don't use them as dishcloths. Um, so, yeah, so I made... These two for my brother-in-law, these two for my sister-in-law, and now I need to make two for sack. my niece, um, which I think I'm going to use this peach. I was thinking I should hey, use can you one from one each. of each, yeah. Yeah, so one of each of these colors, but I, it would have to be the peach and gray. You don't think peach and black will look nice? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I was thinking, I also have the yellow downstairs. There's a... She likes peach. I know. I know, so I don't know. I'll do that, but yeah, so now... They almost have a full family set of what a great idea, and that'll be a, a Christmas like Christmas gift and stuff. Um, that may be a whenever. Oh, um, so yeah, so you do get a lot of yardage yeah. out of these. This gray is is silvery. Actually. Yeah, it is a very silvery yeah. gray. Depending on the color too, when I when I um, paired it with this, it has a very brown oh, feel to yeah, it. Different, yeah. Um, the washcloth is knit on US three. I cast on 48 stitches. The pattern calls for 72. Mm -hmm. The pattern, the 72 stitches would get you a 12 by 12 square. The 48 that I'm using is giving me an 8 by 8 square. And oh. it grows quite a bit when it's wet. Mm -hmm. So I think that's okay. I think the 12 by 12 would be large for a washcloth and maybe okay for a dishcloth but somebody said it's more the 12 by 12 is more of a spa feel to it right and i may stop doing the i-cord loop it's cute but i really dislike it sh it stretches it. it i really dislike um attaching it yeah so that's my two fo's nice two of my fo's two of your FOs. really quick so Beautiful. i just really enjoy that pattern it's my favorite yeah. dishcloth pattern yeah all right you're next um, I have my last FO, which I finally finished. You've been seeing these often. Let's actually see when I started these guys, too. I feel like it's the longest pair of socks 
I feel like I've ever knit. Started these January 29th. This is the basic sock with the integrated heel. I did finally finish my last, my second sock yesterday. Um, I ended, I Kitchenered the toe. This is using Rhubarb by Kevin. Yay. It looks, I mean, they look so good. Yeah, it's, a, it's, they, it's they're, a pretty color. It's very, very pretty. And <clears throat> usually, like, this sock might be a little bit, this one might have a little bit more color in the middle than this one does, but they're very close. You know, like, when you use the yarn, like, yeah. sometimes it could it could change a little bit? Mm-hmm. But these, obviously, are, these are the same. They look so good, Kev. Thanks. Yeah, the yarn is great. I have this much left over. Not bad. No, not bad at all. I used um, 2.25 millimeter needles. I did 72 stitches. The pattern I followed with the exception of the ribbing. I did 2x2 two two rib instead of 1x1 one one rib. But that's only because I started my ribbing before I decided that I wanted to use that, that pattern. Okay. Um, I did the integrated heel, which basically the integrated heel is um, similar to... Like the construction is similar to like a heel flap and gusset, except you are continuing to go around as you're building out that um, that that gusset. Okay. Um, and then you are doing some short rows back and forth when you when you close down. Um, you like decrease decrease down. Uh, or do your heel turn. The um the yarn feels wonderful. I haven't blocked these yet or washed them, but I'll use my feet to block them, and then we'll throw them in the in the wash like we usually do. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. It was it was a, a really good, really fun to use your yarn. Yeah, it's it the was first thing really that, fun. Is it the no? You've used like those. I did. I marled. Yarn, yeah, like, I marled two of them together. I think that so, I made when, like, with hat. the yarn or the dye you got me for Christmas, mm -hmm. right? I don't oh know. yeah, maybe. I don't know. That was one of the first yarns that you yeah. dyed. That was before you had the um, Etsy shop. Yeah. So, yeah, rhubarb. There will be rhubarb in the next, next shop, shop update, update, which, I which got a little pushback because of everything that's been going on. So, once it's decided when it'll be, we'll post it on yeah. our. Instagram, and then we'll post it on YouTube, like community thing, whichever. Yeah. So that's rhubarb, and this is eighty twenty, I believe, eighty percent superwash merino, twenty percent nylon. That just worked out really well. That I it did. It, by accident. it did. So my preferred sock method, obviously, everybody knows, is nine inch circular needles. And this Can is you what imagine if they stop these are them? fixed. Um, I have quite a few pairs of these. I have tried using the um, the Chow Gu minis to make like 10 inch circulars, but I just much prefer, especially in a small circumference, um, I much prefer the fixed circulars. I've tried Haya Haya Flyers. I've tried. Um, You've tried Addy 9 inch, Addy 10 inch. You've tried Haya Haya 9 inch. Yep. You've tried Knitter's Pride. Yep. Um, Which actually, those were not terrible, except I broke them. They were wood. So they were wood, yeah. yeah. So anyway, these are my preferred needle, chow goo, uh, fixed. And then I do my, usually I do my heels on Magic Loop as well as the toes. But I didn't need to. I stayed on circulars to do this entire heel. Oh, nice. Um, yep. Because you, you're just increasing um, as you're going. Like you're, I forgot what the increase actually is. And then um, with your turn, it's, it's such a small amount of time that you're spending going back and forth mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, I was able to stay. And then I only used – I used the uh, magic loop for the toe, which the toe decreases were a little bit different as well. Oh, this really? Is, yeah. Not a is typical it, ra ra rounded toe? No, it, but it, crea it creates a rounded toe, but the decrease is different. You okay. have your – instead of your – Typical, my my go to decrease first decrease is an SSK. Yep. You know, and then you go down and then you knit two together. Be, yeah. You know, in your last three, this one you're like passing over a stitch. Oh, okay. to, de to do a decrease, it just looks a little slightly different, slanted differently, but um, yeah. 
but it's really not noticeable. No, you really can't tell. You, there, you can't like, tell. Like, visually, there's no difference. Yeah. So, and then this yeah, is what I use for a magic loop. I think it's like a 32-inch cord. Yeah. Um, and this sits in my, this stays in my Delic Both of these stay in my Delic So funny you just said that. Um, until I'm ready for them. Because I was like, let me, let me check Delic needle case. What it's, if it's faux leather. Portfolio. No, here it is right now. I just wanted to see. Oh, I think like it's I could... It's like legit. I don't know. Legit. So you can see I have my all my nine inch circulars in here, or all my small circumference. So I have another addy. I have another um, what you call it? Chow goo. And then this is, oh, this is this is those with the two different needles, the easy knits. I didn't care for them, so so much. I actually, don't know. I don't think it says here. Okay. Well. We shouldn't be speaking about things that we don't know. About. I know. Oh, well. Okay. It smells like real leather. So <clears throat> I'm going to call it real leather. And that's that. Those are my um, those are my socks. All right. Is it my turn? It's your turn. All right. So this is my last FO. Um, and actually, uh, not recording. We were going to record yesterday, but we actually came in here and we took all the yarn out and put it back in um, its place, which... The way that we our organization don't you know is different because a lot of I know a few people I know like people have like you're not organized right fix your yarn so the way that our yarn is organized is we have um, like this cube here is raised fingering weight yarn those are all like special yarns this is I think um, yours as well yeah this is some DK and Sport mm -hmm. this here is um, all like our Brooklyn Tweed we have some. DK over there. We have sweater quantities that you can't see. Yeah, and then over below. here is on this side that you can't really see is like my fingering weight. We have some worsted and we have um, chunky. Yeah. And then like our Felici, so stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we came in here and we kind of like took everything out and just. Yeah. Our organization works for us. It we, does. we know how it rolls. We know it gives you guys some anxiety sometimes. Um, so I finished this yesterday. Or no, I blocked them yesterday since we didn't. These are yet. so good. So this is living in my. Um, I know. Prince so, pie bag. So sad. Has anybody? Because um, I know that they were selling the pattern for these bags. I don't know if they released the pattern. I know they were going to. Oh. I think they have, but I'm, I don't know. I'm not going to speak of things I don't know. Is that our new rule? Yeah. No. Just, no. All right. So this is my DK socks. Yeah. This is knit out of. Meddling Kids by To The Max Yarn Co., who is now Frankie Gray Fibers. They actually just dyed up a batch of this recently. I saw it on their TikTok. So we I think have... it's so funny that you follow their TikTok. I don't follow any knitting TikToks. I try to, I'm trying to follow more because yeah, it's really like fun to, do that to um, see. So I love this color. Do you follow Chip? I think uh, Fiber I Hustle now has a Fiber a, Hustle does a have TikTok. a TikTok. I got to go find it. I forgot to. Um, Sorry, go ahead. So... It came with two minis and a full skein. So oh, 100 grams used, of this. You used quite a bit. So I really got down to, um, I, I was nervous with this. I used this brown yeah. for the heels and toes. Use this one for my, wait, I said brown. Brown for cuff and toes. Right. This for the heels. I used two different patterns. Um, for this, I used Kemper Ray's mm, Spree Socks. Yep. Right. So Spree Socks by Kemper Kemper Ray from Junk Yarn Designs. And I don't know what I was having. It could have just been a mental block. I was having an issue with my count on my heel. So then I went to um, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady. Yeah. Her vanilla DK socks, and it just worked for me. Mm -hmm. So I used that for the heel. I use her counts all right, a lot. I actually use her count, her counts a lot on some of my vanilla socks. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start um, I'm going to start using stitch markers because mm -hmm. I hate having to measure and count. Mm -hmm. So I did a 48 stitch cast on with German twisted cast on. I use Andrea Mowry's video. I did 12 rows of a two by two rib. 
I went till I had about seven and a quarter to seven and a half inches from cast on. I did a heel flap and gusset. This is 24 rows because it's typically half of your cast on is the number of rows that you really. Yeah. If you really think about it, it you do a repeat. Oh, yeah. Because if you do like if you do 64, you're doing 30... 36. So you're. So you're doing 18, you, well, you 32. 18 slip stitches. Right. 18 slip stitches. So mm -hmm. that's kind of... Oh, I do 30. I do 72 stitches. So right. Yeah. And then um, I knit... I actually made my toe a, or my leg. No, foot. My foot. A little bit shorter. I think I just went over six inches. Mm -hmm. And then I did my toe and I decreased until I had 12 stitches on each of my needles. I use my Chowgu interchangeable set. This is knit on a US 4, so a 3.5 millimeter. Um, yeah, I really enjoy it. This is a 80-20. The colors are gorgeous. Blend. Yeah. So, which is really, really nice. It's actually a very hard yarn to break. It is a, I want to say it's a 4-ply, so it's not your typical 80-20. It's a very strong yarn, so I'm not going to be concerned wearing you know wearing these out right um so yeah it is dk weight you get 274 yards and um 55 yards in the minis and i have a decent amount left over definitely so i'm super pleased with the way that these turned out i love the colors me too on this so much so that is my last step up right on All right cool moving on to whips Oops. Oops. How many do you have? I have two whips. You want to start? Because I only sure. have the one. So keeping with this theme of socks, I just cast these on last night. This is in my, oh, crud. Twinkle and Twilight? Twinkle and Twilight bag. Yes. Which, love. Love. Her bags are amazing. Yeah. They have the little, um, some pockets inside and then the little thing they to have, put your... Yeah. This little thing to put your needle or a pen or scissors uh -huh. or whatever. So sticking with to the max yarn, Frankie Garrett Gray Fibers, as they are known now. I bought this yarn because of this, of one color, honestly. I Actually, I love it, but it's Call Me By Your Name, Fingering, fingering Weight Sock Set. It's 80-20, um, 365 meters, 400 yards. In a hundred gram or 20 gram mini i measured it it was actually 23. this mini is called peach so if you so know if you know you know you know and i thought it was funny it made me chuckle so i'm like i have to buy it when they showed it, it on... makes me embarrassed i get a little red in the cheeks <laughs> so i cast on a new sock on my chagu us one which is a 2.25 millimeter again i did a german twisted cast on 64 stitches yeah i've done 16 inches of two by two ribbing 16 inches no 16 rows of a two by two rib can you imagine that would be a long ass rib and then i once i added the main color which is really pretty it's it is pretty like some greens and yellows and some blue in here um, it's got a some like, white. It's got quite a halo. This is actually a really nice base. It's very strong. It almost feels like yeah, it's eighty twenty. It almost feels like it would be um, uh, like a BFL or something. Really, it, it feels no, a little bit different. Or you know what though, Ma merino nylon. I don't. It may be a three ply. The ply is probably different. It's probably not a two ply. I don't know. Maybe it is. No, I don't know. Ply. It's yeah. It's really nice though um so I, I love the color and there's some speckles in here too that you don't see with it skein or actually no you see, do you get yeah. a few so it's a very nice light color and what i did when i added the main color i knit the first row because i don't like uh the pearls when you're adding yeah i i just prefer mm -hmm. the look of Mm -hmm. um, so you knit that last so i knit the first row of this and then i'm doing a three by one rib oh i see for what you're my, saying for the body yeah. of the sure. sock yep 
Which you it just melts right in, so you can't even tell. Yeah, you won't be you no. won't be able to see it. Um, mm. So yeah, and I cast these on last night. I scanned it up and cast these on last night. As soon as we pulled it out, I was like, oh man, I really love this. Color. I know you grabbed it immediately. Like, up, oh, gotta put this on. I know I grabbed that. I grabbed some yarn for another Eno hat, which I'll probably cast on today. Yeah, and skein that up. So that is my newest cast on. I guess I could start casting some other things on. I definitely need to do some socks. Now that I have, I'd like to keep socks on. Correct. The and that was the thing I said. I wanted to knit twelve pairs of socks. I've now done two this year, uh-huh. so this will be like my March cast on. Okay. Um, I have the. You know, potentially, depending on how much I knit, I could finish them by the end of the month. You could. Like the this sock. So these socks, I finished them this week. I finished sock number one on like Wednesday. Yeah, you actually did right. Wednesday. And you're then I cast, right. I cast on sock number two mm-hmm. and did it in a day or two. Yeah. So obviously it's DK, so it's going to knit up a little bit quicker, but then a fingering weight one. So that's all my... Nope, that's not all no, my whips. No, you have all my whips, still. You have a whip now. I do. Whoops. Okay. This whip is living in a naughty knitting sack. This is the one that we got with the mermen inside, which I love. It's so good. It's not really naughty. It's just no, nice. it's not naughty. No, not at all. It's nice to look at. Yeah. So, y'all, I... Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, I started that fingering weight sweater, which I'm still working on, but I haven't put anything on it. And I'm like, I really wanted to have a colorwork sweater, I think, for Rhinebeck. And I was starting to get anxious, like, um, which one do I want to do? Let me at least in my head plan out which one I want to do. So then I found the pattern and I was like immediately, oh my God, no, I want this I want definitely want to do it, and I want to start it immediately, right? Like I was back and forth. What what which patterns do I want to do? I had this, Mountain Mist, which I which I loved. I thought that was really good. Did you do this during a knit night? Did you just order it? During- I ordered it during knit night because right. I found it right before, so two Thursdays ago. Yep. I was like, okay, I really need to hunker down. I think we were talking about it in the knit night, like what our Rhinebeck sweaters are going to be, and everybody's Probably. doing something like color work or nice cables or whatever and um i think a finger weight fingering weight sweater like would be beautiful but the so basic is basic like that's going to just be a staple in my wardrobe not like a statement piece that i would be you know so i fell in love with this which you're probably all like duh it's been around forever because there's thousands and thousands of um projects but this is the radari um it's by lopi lopi design it's wonderful i i fell in love with the colors and everything about that picture like the rope the boat the yeah background. so i got i've got a rope on the way um we're gonna lease a boat i'm just kidding no but the sweater the guy's a little i mean i don't know he kind of reminds if me he of watches Owen. the podcast but he i like the sweater Owen wilson he kind of looks a little bit like owen wilson but i love the sweater and um hey books i i went ahead and i bought um the same colors and the same yarn for this sweater hey baby so i bought let lopi I bought it from, let me tell you exactly where I bought it, because I was so impressed with the price. And I had never worked with Let Lopi before, and I know people were talking talk about how um, it's such a rustic, not even rustic, it's a rough yarn, but it's super light, and it's super warm, and it, the color work, um, and especially for like a like Icelandic type of sweater, is perfect. And this is like... Um, I don't know. I was just like really excited about about it. So I put the order in. Within one week, it was at my door, and it was thirteen dollars um, shipping from Iceland to the United States. I got it from the Icelandic store. 
How easy does that sound? So this is the Icelandic store. I'll put, um, we'll have that link down below. The yarn was so affordable. It, the Each ball was $4 and they're 50 gram um, skeins. I bought the entire sweaters quantity, all the recommended um, um, yarn for it. And it came to $55.86 for a, a sweater's quantity of gorgeous yarn and $13 shipping. I thought that was really, really good. And it came within a week. Yeah, so, that's really good. Mm -hmm. It is scratchy. It's very scratchy. And so I think... I'm okay with that. Like, it, I don't have a sensitivity to, to wool. If you have a sensitivity to scratchy wool, you probably want to be careful with what, what you do with this. You would probably want to use it for, like, outerwear um, as opposed to, like, like a knit t-shirt or something like that. But I think I Hi, buddy boy. remember somebody saying if you soak it in Dawn, yeah. it softens it up quite a we'll bit. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's going to be, this is going to be like obviously in uh, a sweater that I would wear over like a t-shirt. I'm okay with a short sleeve shirt, I think. Um, anyway, here's what I got. I, I Like I said, I bought I bought the, the quantities that it recommended. Um, and I'll show you all the colors together. And then I'll show you my progress because I actually made some progress. Okay. So where's my book? Oh, it's actually in the pattern. So Radari also, and I learned, it means um, like knight, like a knight that rides a horse. Okay. So this is my main color. This is murky. Then we have, um, oh, so this, they were out of black. It, it asked for black. It was, they were out of black. So this is black sheep, black sheep heather is this color, which it's a lot, it's, it's a little darker in person. Oh, maybe not. No. No, that shows about, no, it's that's about right. But that's, um, number 0052, which is black sheep heather. Then, um, this one is uh, straw, and this one is barley. So, look what I did. I did a whole sleeve already. So that's the sleeve. Is can I? Is that the cup? This is it's the cuff. It's going to be rolled. It's a rolled okay. cuff and it's a rolled neck. Okay. But you do some ribbing. You do some ribbing here. Okay. To, to uh, prevent it from rolling up any more than gotcha. that little bit. Then you do a little bit of color work and then you do your increases. It's a very simple pattern. Um, they do expect you to know, like it doesn't tell you how what type of increases to do and how to do your increases. It does tell you where to place your increases, which is, is really good. Um... And so I'm doing the extra large. This is the sleeve. So like this doesn't bother me. Like this is against my skin and I can, you know, I can feel it. It's not like super scratchy or anything like that. So I may have to go a little bit higher. I did the recommended 52 centimeters, um, but my arms are a little bit longer. So I have a little bit more to go. So I just put it on waist yarn and stopped it there at 52 centimeters. Um, I'll do, it's a bottom up sweater. So I'll do that until I get to my underarm and just see some, if there's like a little extra fabric there. If not, I'll, I'll knit this a little bit longer, but I didn't feel like, do, I didn't want to do a swatch because remember last time how aggravating it was for me to do oh, a swatch yeah. in the round and the pattern recommends that you do the body first, but I was like, let me just do the sleeve in the round because then I can measure my gauge and, um, and it's just a sleeve. If I have to tink back, you know, I could just tink back or I can adjust the needle size needles as I go. I did get gauge, which is great. Um, uh, I, I got, um, 18 stitches per four inches. And, um, I did not measure my row gauge because it really doesn't matter. Cause you're just, you're, you're just going by, you're length. going by length and the pattern is in, um, metric. So centimeters and stuff, it's, I think it's a little bit more precise anyway. So yeah, I did this whole sleeve 
which I like the, I love the the color work. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't look right. It's not. It doesn't look too tight. It doesn't look like you pulled your stitches. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Right. No, I think you're good. Yeah. I mean, my, I try to keep my floats nice and loose in there. The weaving in ends is gonna be a a breeze because you really only need to like go through two stitches and the yarn is so um what's the word <clears throat> well it, you could, and you can felt it too if yeah. you needed to yeah uh-huh. um so i started my second sleeve this morning no last night i did the the rolled cuff i did the color work this morning while i was sitting on the car- couch with the dog so now the color work is done and i'm back to where you think um, you're going now i'm just going to be knitting with the main color and doing my increases but it's good I'm I'm having so much fun with this. Good job. Yep, and I feel like I don't know, I feel like I'm knitting like this sweater is going to last forever. Um and I was really afraid to do like some color work stuff, but I'm happy. And I'm, you know, using some yarn that I've heard about and um I was a little bit nervous when I opened up the the bag because I still have a bunch over there. Where I, when I opened up the bag and I felt it at first touch, I'm like, uh oh, because it almost felt like a teeny bit softer than twine, like that <laughs> yes. that twine yes. you get from like Home Depot. Yeah, yeah. Very very similar it looks feeling. Like, it looks like twine the way that it's spun. Yeah. But people but really it's gorgeous. do use this yarn yes. quite often. And it's, so. um, you know, I, I have to say, it's 100% wool, uh, obviously. You want to get and I think there's only one mill in Iceland called Icetech, maybe? Is that the name of it? But I think there's only one mill in Iceland that does all of this yarn. So I'm super excited. It worked up really, really fast. I, I did that on Saturday, my first sleeve. I cast that on last Saturday. And I got all of my my increases done like pretty much by Sunday night. Um, and then I just had to do a couple more inches, but I put it on hold and worked on some other things. So I think the sleeve's going to work up really, really quickly. Like I said, I'm just going to do a little bit of the... Um, I'll do the body up until like my underarm, and then I'll see where the sleeve you know, meets. If I have to add a couple more rows to that, that'll be easy enough. I use the... Um, that knitting the barber cord knitting barber that cord but we used i used the uh the craft version one of it which is pony pony bead string i think it's called and it's this it's this like rubbery plastic stuff and yeah. i think there's pony bead string it's, is pony, what bead, it's called. pony bead lacing pony bead is lacing. what it's called it's very similar to the knitting barber yeah cord. So I did my sleeves uh, in the round because I, you know me, and I like to knit. Um, I, I like to the, knit in um, the round. The sorry. Door. Yeah, I closed the bedroom door because he was gonna jump off. Yeah, no worries. And I'm doing them with my um, my chowgu. The I, the first sleeve I did with the two inch tips. The second sleeve I'm using the three inch tips. They're just a little bit more comfortable for me. And I'm doing like twelve inch circumference. So. Yes. Yeah. That is that. I could not be happier with it. I'm very excited to, um, to get that to get that going. I think it's going to look really nice. Now the th- the my hope is that it's not that it is it's cold the day that we go to Rhinebeck. One yeah. of the days we go to Rhinebeck because yeah. that's going to be a gorgeous warm 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 sweater. And if we have the weather that we did last time, I don't know. Maybe I'll just wear that in shorts. Yeah, you something. could do that. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Yeah. All right. And that's it. Those are all of my, that's all my knitting goodness. So here's my, you hear my next, stomach? I know you're hungry. I'm st- um, so my last whip is you guys have been seeing it since 2019. This is living in my naughty knitting sacks. And this is my boaster on. I finished the body. So here sorry we go. guys. Sorry. It's right next to the microphone. So okay. I finished the body. Um, it actually fits very well. I, it is bunchy up here, but and I'm hoping it's just because of the increases and that it will block out. This section was a little bit tight in the midsection, and I'm hoping that that now that I took it off the needles, it actually loosened up quite a bit. Yeah. And blocking will help. I did the two inches of ribbing, 
and I did a stone bind off, which I actually didn't mind doing too much. This is knit out of... I feel of, like it didn't take you long either, the stone no. bind off. It took me a couple, like an hour or two. Yeah. This is um, knit out of Taki yarn, and I'm using the gray for the body. And then this tealish blue is the... Do I still have some in here? Yeah. You want to come up? Is for the color work, which is actually just mosaic knitting, so it's not really color work um, or complicated. So... Um, and I kind of just put this on hold after Tarquin got hurt. It's not something that's, you know, it's a sweater. So it's on your lap and you can't put it down easily and kind of move on. So I've put that on hold and that's why I did the dishcloths and the socks. This is knit on a US 5, a US 6, and a US 7. So um, the US 5 is a 3.75, US 6 is a 4, and a US 7 is 4.5 millimeter needles. So I had them on my Chagu cord with my connector to give me an extra yeah. long one. I currently have the same pony lacing in my sleeves. So I just have to pick up my They're sleeves. They're very handy. Yeah, they really are. Um, yeah, I just need to pick up my knees, my knees, my sleeves and knit. So hopefully I can maybe get that done throughout the week. It is a DK weight sweater, so it knits up pretty quickly. It is quite heavy as well. So, yeah, I'll be happy to get that done. I have an idea for my next sweater. So in our in the process of cleaning out the yarn room yesterday, we realized that we have a bunch of Wool of the Andes. Oh, yeah. Um, wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn that we probably just bought because it was on sale with no projects in mind. And I don't know what to do with it because I don't have anything in mind for it so what i'm thinking is i and they're um, random colors like not a lot of each color and stuff right correct so what i was thinking is i was looking at when i couldn't sleep last night i went to ravelry and i was like all right As let's just does. look at some worsted weight sweaters and i put a couple in my queue and the one that i'm leaning towards doing is so all the way at the bottom, I need to reorganize my queue. Is I, I have to. I don't even think I have a queue. So the men's oh, classic beautiful. raglan pullover by Jane Richmond. So here it's an eight dollar pattern. This is what it looks like. Um, I was looking at projects. Nobody that I saw. I didn't go through obviously all of them. Nobody did what I'm thinking of doing. Well, this one's close. Yeah. Ish. I think I'm going to do a striped version I think or that's a color a idea. blocked version. Yeah. I have some browns, yellows, some grays. That's a striped um, one. Yeah, that's a very small Two stripe. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do one color up to my raglan. So solid up here and the cast on, the chest, and until you split for sleeves. Right. And then once I split for sleeves, I'm going to start striping. Oh. And making sure that i have enough so you'll have a solid like yoke i'm gonna have a solid yoke section mm -hmm. we'll say and then stripe afterwards great that's kind of my thought so I, i'll have to play with those colors so that's all the knitting right that's all our whips our fo's so let's what do we talk about next next is usually like oh next it, oh next is i will post i will post and acquisitions what? and we have you showed yours oh yeah that that, that yarn. That lopey. I don't have any yarn. But let me, I'm patting myself on the back because I, $50, $55 yeah. for a, a gorgeous sweater. Oh. And I have no purchases either. I do have one that's probably either just arrived while we've been up here or will be arriving tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I bought some um, Hugh Loco, one of her retiring hens from 2021. Retiring and then, hens, that sounds cute. Yeah. And then we have, yeah, and we showed our Delicue stuff. So that's, was our owl post and you showed your yeah, purchases of your out yarn. Of order and that's that so let's talk about what we've been reading and watching i think the medicine is kicking look at his eyes i know so he's on an anti-inflammatory and he's on a pain med yeah he's still getting them because they didn't tell us how long to not he may and be he's on comfortable so. yeah and he may be on gabapentin for the rest of his life yeah. um which i'm fine with if he needs it mm -hmm. um so um <laughs> So we had gabapentin right before we came up here. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what we've been reading and watching. Watching. 
watched, we watched the Jumanji, the one with The Rock and Kevin Hart and Jack Black, and I don't and the you guys. Let me get the. I was so against the actress's name so that we don't leave her out. Yeah, I was so resistive to this movie when it first came out, and I I don't know why. I think it was probably because The Rock is not my favorite um, actor, and I really liked Jumanji. The original Jumanji. Shut the front door. What? So the actress, wait till you, I can't, I can't believe I didn't realize this, is um, Karen Gillian. She's Nebula. She is? Yes. Let me see. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that. Okay. I don't know how I didn't. So, okay. So, yes. All right. So we watched Jumanji. Welcome we to did. the jungle. It I I loved it. It was good. I, I loved, cracked up. I loved it. It was so good. And I've I never, loved it. I've never seen the one with Robin Williams. I can't believe it. You should. So we need to find that. There, so was, there were a couple of Easter eggs um, hinting back towards that. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh my gosh, I thought it was so good. I thought The Rock and, um, what's his face? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Are hysterical together. Hysterical together. They're and so I don't funny. like either one of them. Typically, I like The Rock. I know. I think. Do I like The Rock? Why? Do I like Vin Diesel? Because I keep thinking I like Vin Diesel. I because The Rock. I think I always think back to him as the Scorpion King Uh, in that shitty, stupid CGI half thing with the scorpion. Is his does his little eyebrow thing, and I just hate it. I think it's so. I can see that. Ugh. But he was so good in this. It was was, really. It was really good. I loved it. I will definitely watch it again. Um, I absolutely yeah. loved every 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 minute of it. I thought it was so good, and I said to Kevin, like, I can't believe how good that was. Anyway, um, so just not even good. going yeah. to what we've watched, but speaking of TV, so I just told this to you. So I don't know if you guys are, um, Anne Rice fans. We are, we are Anne Rice fans as well. Um, especially the Mayfair family yeah. books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where Tarquin's name is actually from, mm-hmm. from Blackwood Farms. Um. So I knew that AMC was releasing a, they're working on a TV show for um, Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. I just recently had found out that they also had the rights to Anne Rice's Mayfair family books. And I didn't know that. They are releasing, they are working on a TV show as well. And they just cast the lead, Rowan, um, in that. So I'm super excited for that. That may be out by the end of the year. So that's a little TV news. Yeah, totally. Um, so watching wise, mm-hmm. we I've been watching Young Justice. So it's an animated DC cartoon series on HBO Max. Right. And I've watched all of season one and thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I thought. And then, no, he's uh, really just like walking around exploring. Yeah, he's, he, his limp is so much better. Yeah, he's he can put so much pressure on him. So it's really good. Um, so I will be watching season two soon. And then basketball is really what it's been. Basketball and podcasts have kind of been where we were. Yeah. And we haven't been in the same room a lot I know. over the past, especially week and a half. So we haven't watched much at all during that time. We wait until he settles down, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, and then we get to hang out together. Mm-hmm. I have. I thought it would be interesting to talk about um, what I've been watching because oh, yeah. I'm. I think I talked about this. I started... That's another thing is I started classes. Two. Yeah, I took, I'm taking two classes at once um, right now. They're, um, I'm taking intro to film and I'm taking a, a philosophy of religion class, which is really, it's a lot of work to take the two classes at once. And they also don't relate to like, like at least when I'm taking my nursing classes, like I can use a lot of that stuff and like it makes more sense to me. But I found that I'm really kind of enjoying the film class. I watched... Um, the first film I watched was a silent film and it was called, um, Sunrise, A Tale of Two Humans, which oh. was, I think it's from like the thirties. Are you looking it up? No, I was, oh. I just want, I was getting prepared for our next segment. Um, it was really interesting. I had never watched a silent film before. I, you know, of course, like it's as part of like the assignment, you have to look a little bit like deeper into the films and stuff, but it, it really was, um, it really was entertaining and they didn't have like, you know, usually they, they have, you know, the action 
takes place. You don't hear dialogue, and then you see like a um, like words pop up, like and then she screamed, and then they ran away. You know, and yeah. then it goes back to like the action or whatever. There was very little of that, so it was mostly a lot of um, talk about. of the action. I would recommend it. It was it was really good. I watched it on YouTube for free. What's he doing? He's licking the floor. It's bizarre. Yeah. And then the next one I watched was um, really good. It was Hitchcock. It was called Rear Window. And it came out in, like I think, 57. And again, it was one of those movies where... I don't know. Some of the older movies have been... I find them very interesting. This one... Oh, good. He's in his bed, of course, right as we're like ending the podcast. He... Um, this one, it's like, it's a, but kind of about voyeurism, not in like a sexual way at all, but it's like about this guy who is injured. He's a photographer, and it's it's really really hot in the summertime, and everybody and he lives in an apartment, and his apartment building overlooks uh, a courtyard that is shared by a couple of other apartment buildings all around it, and because it's so hot, everybody's got their windows open, so. Um, he has nothing else to do but like look out and you can like see into everybody's yeah. like lives and it's so interesting because and it's like i said it's not a uh, like spy on you know being like you know perverted or anything like that it just was so interesting because it like spoke a lot to like the human desire to like know what's going on like, can everywhere imagine people doing that now like COVID, you're in your house like, what know. else are you going to do but look outside and so it was really interesting. And then it, and then he's like witness to what he thinks is a murder. Um, and so he's trying to, um, I'll have to clip this end. And he's trying to get his cop friend to like believe him. And it's just so good. I thought it was so good. I loved every, every minute of it. Um, and I, I would never have watched that movie had it not been for this class. So I think it'll be interesting to share um to share what i've been watching yeah. on these, these podcasts it's only a seven week class but i think we're going to be watching the birds another alfred hitchcock movie which i've seen like bits and pieces of um so i thought that would be really interesting i was just very surprised i sat in my with the dog i had my laptop playing the movie and then i was knitting on the sock upstairs right? upstairs while you were downstairs probably watching basketball or whatever yeah. but um so yeah i thought it was really really cool <laughs> bless you I really think you have allergies. Excuse me. You guys, you should start taking some allergy medicine. So yeah, highly recommend Rear Window. And then if you're interested in like what a silent film is like, you can get that on YouTube. It's called um, Sunrise, A Tale of Two Humans. That's okay. it. Um, Not a sponsor. Hitchcock. Excuse me. You know what we did watch actually really briefly? It was like a 15 minute clip is, um, and this is kind of going into reading. So I've been reading the Iron druid chronicles yeah. and the dog in it oberon is an irish wolfhound and mm. i have no idea oh, what they yeah. look like we and did watch that. i don't know how it ended up on youtube maybe i was looking for it um but there was a little video on this um yeah. on irish wolfhounds and what they look like and the breed so we watched that a couple nights ago um all right so reading i have finished two books i finished nice. reading sapphire sunset which is by c travis rice who's also christopher rice um, this is a new genre for him, a male-male romance type of mystery. It takes place in California. Um, the two main characters meet, hit it off, mm -hmm. have a falling out, meet together five, or meet again five years later, and that's where the book picks up. Um, and they both work at a resort that one of the characters' family has owned. It's um, And there's some drama around it and it's just them kind of cleaning it up and finding bits about their relationship i liked it i didn't love it okay. um i don't know that i loved both of the actors. characters oh the character actors yeah. like i like the characters i don't know if i liked them together i don't know what it was it wasn't my favorite uh -huh. book in the genre that i've read um there's a second one i don't know if i'm gonna read it um so yeah it was okay and then i finished what are we doing for lunch? We have oh, the pork, pork and rice and I think that's it. Yeah, it's not our cheat And day. gravy. Um, mm -hmm. So I finished the eighth book in the Iron Druid Chronicles. This one is called Staked. 
This book series is by Kevin Hearn. Um, yeah, Staked, Kevin Hearn, book eight. Here we are. Nine books in the series. So this one was good. Is that what you picture him looking like? Um, be because of the the because images, the like yeah. here's the oh, it's the same person, image. right? Mm -hmm. Um, like this is the first one. So no, that's weird. Why did you change the image for me? That's rude. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of descriptions of Atticus mm -hmm. throughout. So in this one, they are wrapping up one of the storylines. Uh, that has to do with vampires. So there is, and the three now, now there's th really three main characters or there's, yeah, kind of. They're separated for the most of this. So there's a lot with that's going on in, um, he's snoring. I know, it's cute. cute. <laughs> so I, I've enjoyed it. I'm definitely ready for the series to be over. Um, and it, this was the book was this one? Yeah. Okay. This was the book where you realize that the main character, Atticus, is not like an... He's not an anti-hero or a hero. He... His choices have caused so much pain to other people inadvertently. Like, he doesn't realize it at the time. And most of us... Obviously, we don't. We don't right. always realize that a choice that we make, how it's going to impact other people. But... So much of what has happened in this series happens because of events in book one. And each book, something else happens because of book one, kind mm -hmm. of. And the number of people who've kind of been hurt um, in some shape. Do you, can you guys hear him snoring? No, I don't think it will pick him up. If he starts doing his like dreaming, whimpering, they, they might be able to. Um, but yeah, it, this was the book that it hit me where I was like, oh. He's caused a lot of pain for people. Yeah. You so, were saying that the other day we were talking about So it. I'm really hoping in this last book, which I'm reading, which is called, right, Scorched. This one is where everything comes to an end. It's Ragnarok. Everybody's clearing up the, you know, finishing up all these storylines. And I'm hoping that there's some redemption mm -hmm. in here and some relationships that are mended. It doesn't have to be a happy, happy ending, but... Just some closure on sure. some things. Um, and that, I'm about 50% through, so I'll probably finish it within the next couple of nights. Nice. Yeah, and that's what I've been reading. Great. On I to you. finished one book. I finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Do you know every time I hear that name, I think of the like Flowers in the Attic person? I don't know who that is. I forget their name too, but that's immediately who I go to. Um... I really enjoyed the book, and so and I have to actually respond to you as well. I like like I said, it's been hard to like go. We back haven't done. On, yeah, I know. We haven't um, been paying attention honestly yeah. to social media for yeah, it's been hard a while. Um, but somebody like thanked me for recommending this book, and um, it was I thought it was excellent. It was it did not end the way that I wanted it to. I'm wondering if there's going to be a second book or it's going to be a series because it it does leave things open. Okay. At the end. Um, I found myself like really loving the characters and really like rooting for them. Um, and also like getting sad for her because the, really the concept is that, and I think I explained this last time is that, um, she, she does not like the life that she is currently is living. She was born into in like the 1700s, probably maybe a little bit before that. And she's very independent. She doesn't want to have like, uh, um, not a made marriage. What's like a uh, arranged arranged marriage, um, which you know she couldn't find love. So at that point, her parents needed to marry her off and dowries, and she didn't want to be that. So she like prayed and prayed and prayed for and like gave um, gifts to like the gods so that she can get out of this somehow. She ends up making a. Um, a, a a god type character does end up hearing her but it's kind of like a darker one does give her what she thinks that she wants she's gonna you know now she, i'm not really ruining anything because that's the whole concept of the book so she basically gets to live forever um 
and but the problem is that people don't remember her so she can't like she could never knit her stitches would fall apart she can't write anything um the i know her um all the marks will just disappear if she breaks something it gets you know put back together so she can't right but she can't leave any evidence of herself behind and the people would be able to have a conversation with her but the minute she leaves a room or they leave the room they completely forget about her so um somebody does finally remember her and it's really an interesting connection as to why and i won't give it away because i really do recommend this book i think you guys should definitely read it um and it does it goes it has her jump has us jump back in time with her to kind of fill in some gaps and tell a story like her progression um through her life and it ends up being 300 and some odd years later that she's been kind of living um and she can't own a home so like you can't sign a lease yeah. or anything so it's just really interesting it's really interesting huh. Um, they do a really, really good job with that consistency throughout the, the book as well. And then at the end, she gets her, um, not vindication, but she, she gets to make her stamp on things. And then come to find out she has been making, um, she has been making a stamp on stuff and, and influencing art and people without really realizing it. Um, but read it. It's really, really good. I was very excited um to have finished it i felt good satisfied but i i wish i want more and i wish it had ended a little bit differently which is why i hope that there's going to be a second book because now you the reason why she chose what she chose at the end needs to pay off in my mind if that that'll make sense if you read the book. Why do you write the author? Say, are you doing a second book? I know. Or Google, maybe Google and see if there's going to be another one. Oh, maybe I could. Yeah. Or if you all know, just leave a comment down below. So I finished that. I started uh, another book called Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Um, there's the cover art. So far, so good. I like it a lot. I love the way that the author's um, style of writing is. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm very, I think I'm like 20% in. Something like that, maybe even less than that. But she's doing a good job building the world and how she describes things, I think is great. So, uh, yeah, I like it so far. Okay. Yep. And then I started an Audible book the other day, yesterday. Yesterday. Was it? Or was it the day before? Um, no, maybe yesterday. Maybe I yesterday. thought you did it two days in a row. Maybe. And that is called The Wizard's Butler. And I don't know. Can I get to? Oh, by Nathan L- Lowell. Lowell. L O W E L L. Um. I don't really know how to like navigate Audible. Na- without it starting to play, you know. If I click on it, it's just gonna play. It's um. It's really good. It's modern day, um, real world, but the um. It's. I can't really explain explain it, but I'm I find it very very entertaining. Okay. Um, I believe it at that. I'm about two hours into the book, and I have like nine hours to go. It's, All right. Yeah, it's good. He's like, gets called to this house, or answers an ad in the paper because he needs money, and come to find out, it's to be a, a butler to this elderly gentleman who thinks he's a wizard, according to his nieces and nephews. But in true, you know, book fashion, cue weird things happening, like he's waving his hand and doors are closing, mail is disappearing, he's talking about pixies cleaning the house and fairies mowing the lawn. Um, it's lighthearted. I think it's really cool. I like the main character. He's very relatable. Is it the butler or the old man? The butler. Okay. The butler is the main character, uh, is, is our protagonist. Yes. And um, we learn a little bit more about the old man. The, the reader, whoever's reading this, is doing a great job. How do I tell who that is? I think go to your library and then. Oh, click do these that. little three dots. And then go to, yeah, maybe title details. All right. There. Narrated by Tom Taylorson. Here you go. Oh, look. This is The Wizard's Butler. And yeah, it says only from Audible. 
Okay. So I'm wondering if maybe it's it's an only Audible thing? If it says only from Audible, maybe? (sighs) Okay. Narrated by Tom Taylorson. And it won an award. It did. It won the 2021 Voice Arts Award Audiobook Narration Fantasy. Okay. Who knew that had awards for that? Yeah, so so for five grand a month and a million dollar chaser, after a year he'll get a million dollars. Okay. Roger Mulligan didn't care how crazy the old geezer was. All he had to do was keep Joseph Perry Shackelford alive and keep him from squandering the estate for a year. I would do it. But they didn't tell him about the Pixies. I would totally sign up. So good. It's so good. 12 hours. I have it going at a uh, 1.2 times speed. Okay. That's just, I don't know. I love it. It's good. Entertaining. (laughs) I think, I think that's all. Yeah. He's so cute right now, guys. Let me see if I can share a picture with you. We'll have some more Tarquin time. Isn't he cute? I'm sound asleep. I'm happy that he's feeling much better. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, it, you're staying home with him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. And I'll be home tomorrow. With him we got to say tomorrow. I'm taking him to the vet. So hopefully by the end of like next week, we're like in the clear. Yeah, um, but it's not, almost like pay, like validation that what we're doing and like the sacrifices that we're making yeah, and like being sure. so crazy about him not jumping up on stuff and that it's like paying off because he seems to be getting much. Better. Yeah, and then I'm I'm hoping that if needed for a third week, if I need to, I can work from home like yeah. the following week. Um, they're oh, pretty accommodating, idea. and for a CCL tear. Or for the CCL, if he doesn't need surgery, recovery time is three to six weeks. Yeah. So depending on when it happened, we're somewhere in that time frame now. Mm-hmm. Um, he, like we said, we, he had re-injured it or aggravated it again. So I don't know if that was a setback or kind of where that played in, but we'll see. So that so is guys, that. that is that. We, we have, have anything interesting coming up this week or next week? No. No, but you know what? We're not too far away from y'all. We're like a month in a week away from the Connecticut Sheep and Wool oh, yeah. and North Haven yes. Fairgrounds. So we'll be doing that next month. So that's exciting. Today's that's very the, exciting. Today's the first day of spring. Is it really? It is. Aww. The 20th. It's nice because the grass is like green. There's like buds, buds. starting to come up on the trees. And we did um, Daylight Savings, we which did. you and I were talking about how the con- Congress has started the first step in passing that we don't do it anymore. Yeah. But then I read something recently where it's we've tried to get rid of it in the past, but what ends up happening is during the winter months, our mornings, the sunrise is so much later that you don't get sunrise until like somewhere between no. eight and nine thirty. I know I'm out there in the stupid with the flashlight at like five in the morning. Right. So morning. people don't typically like sending their kids to school in the dark or going to work in the dark. Right. So I don't know if that's the best idea. I hadn't thought about that before. You just think of like, oh, it gets dark so early. Mm-hmm. But then if you push that back, it's going to get light so much later. Right. It's not going to be fun um, being out of the house at 8 o'clock in the morning in right. the dark. Totally. So I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah, I think that's everything. I um, think we're done. Did we say how long the shawl, sh- what is it, shawl it forward? Shawl it on? Shawl it on. Shawl it off. Shawl it off. Shawl it off. It's a shawl it off. I think the end of... April. We did say that. End of April. Okay. So, so after like a, that... A month and a week. Thank you again to Delicu. That was yes, thank really you, amazing. Delicu. Um, and we'll, I guess I we'll see it. you in a fortnight. So we, yeah. Thank you, everybody. And um, have fun crafting. Bye. Bye, y'all.